Welcome to our latest video. In this video, we're going to discuss getting around in GNOME Shell 3. If you've been keeping up with our YouTube channel, you'll know that in one of our previous videos, we've installed GNOME Shell 3 using Ubuntu 11.10. Uh, I've been using a VirtualBox setup here, so it's a rather low spec machine, so I may have some stability issues or you know, some speed issues. Just please bear with me with that. Uh, GNOME Shell 3 is overall a nice desktop environment. If you're thinking it may be similar to GNOME 2, I'm sorry, but it's pretty different. Uh, they've moved a lot of stuff around. The functionality is still there, but if you're used to GNOME 2, you're going to have to do a little digging around to find it. If you've used Ubuntu prior to 11.10, then you were using GNOME 2, as long as you weren't in the KDE or the XFCE or one of those other variants of Ubuntu. Overall, you can tell straight off the bat, it's a nice looking desktop. It's clean, there's not any clutter on the desktop. It's a uh, you know, it's, it's pretty slick looking. I will give you the fact that it looks looks somewhat futuristic. It looks neat. Uh, it's kind of minimal. Stuff's out of the way. I do like that. So we'll go ahead and jump in and talk about a couple of the components about it right off the bat. We have activities in the top left. We have the time and date in the center. We have some notification icons in, towards the right corner. And we have our username, which is also a menu as well. Then at the very bottom, we have our messaging bar. And that's pretty much it from the, the standard UI of it. It's very clean, very state, you know, everything stays out of the way. Let's start with the messaging bar. This is probably one of the, the best features I like about GNOME Shell 3. If you use Gwiver and have Gwiver tied to one of your social networks, any of those updates that are fed through Gwiver typically will pop up in your top corner of the screen in a bubble if you're using another desktop environment. But with GNOME Shell 3, they've fed those message updates through a toolbar that pops up at the bottom and it stays out of the way. As you can see I have no updates actually being fed out to me. But so I can click on Gwiver and I'll get the last updates that were fed. If I get an update through a social network that update will pop up here in the center of the screen at the very bottom. Out of the way. It doesn't block what you're doing. It's not intrusive. I do like that and I wish we could actually roll that over into other desktop environments because I like the way that works. Uh, so with that out of the way, we'll come up to Activities. If you left click, here we have several components. The Activities screen will be the core area of navigating through GNOME Shell 3, much like the Dash is in Unity. With that being said, we do have some similar naming conventions here as well. Uh, you notice down the left hand side of the screen we have a dock bar that resembles what you would see with Unity. Not to the T, it's not identical, but it's, it's pretty close, or it's close enough for me anyways. By default, you will have some icons there. Uh, Firefox is your web browser, Shotwell, Ubuntu Software Center, and a couple other icons will be there as well. If you're using a program or running a program in the background, that program's icon will probably pop up in the dash and it will stay there until you close it out. The center of the screen, you notice, is very empty. Uh, that's because I have no programs running. If I had a program running, we'd see a live thumbnail representation of that program right here. To demonstrate that, let's just go ahead and launch Firefox, click on Activities. Now we have a big thumbnail. The more programs you run, the smaller those thumbnails will get. These thumbnails are a live representation. So if we were running something like, say, a YouTube video, we'll go to my YouTube channel, for example, just to demonstrate. play and you'll notice now that video is of course playing in the thumbnail so that's kinda cool we get to see what's going on with it and this will lead us over to our workspaces pane you notice that it slides out when we mouse over it that's pretty cool it stays out of the way one thing I do like with GNOME Shell 3 is it seems like they were very big on the concept of getting the clutter out of the way out of the middle of the screen and keeping a pretty clean desktop environment, which is nice. But let's say you want to use one of these workspaces. The whole concept behind workspaces isn't a new one. Uh, we've had it with just about every previous version of Ubuntu and the majority of other Linux distributions out there all use workspaces. It's an easy way you can organize or categorize your open windows or open programs. Let's say we wanted to move Firefox to its own workspace. Simply come in and left click on the live thumbnail. We'll drag it out of the way. Drag it over here to the workspace pane. 
find the workspace you want to drop it on and let it go. Now you notice we have a third workspace that was created. This workspace is a clean one. We can left click it and there we go. You can of course come back into activities and click on any of these workspaces to access what is on those workspaces at that time. There's also a quick shortcut you can use. You can press Control Alt up or down to navigate through that list of workspaces. Right now you'll notice I'm at the Ubuntu Software Center workspace which is the topmost. So we go down through the list. If you wanted to move what is on a current workspace to another workspace without clicking and dragging back through the activities menu, simply go through the workspace that you want to move, say my Firefox, press Control Alt and Shift, and use the arrow key to move in the direction of the workspace you want to apply to. So let's say we want to move Firefox back to the same workspace with the Ubuntu Software Center. So we Control Alt Shift, hit the up arrow, and you're done. Now if you wanted to shuffle the Software Center, Alt and Tab will bring up the, the application switcher. Tab over to the Software Center. Alt Control Shift down. Now we have it shuffled to its own workspace. See, there we go. So that's a little bit about workspaces. If you left click on applications, we get a list of all the applications that are set up on our Ubuntu machine. Now this is an unfiltered list. This is every application listed just in one big batch. If you want to see what those applications are by category, we can left click our categories down the right hand side of the screen here and sort that list out. The other way you can find your application is by searching for it. And there I have the calculator. It feels almost like the developers of GNOME Shell 3 had it in mind that most people were going to be searching for their applications. I don't know if they got the same menu that the developers from Unity got. Uh, personally, I've never been a big fan of searching for an application. In all of my past experiences, I like to navigate through the menu, find the category, hit the application I want, and let it run. Or in some cases, I'll even bind a keyboard shortcut to it and just launch it that way. Um, searching for applications doesn't necessarily impact me very largely. Personally, I just like to know where I've got stuff installed and use it from there, but I'm sure some people like to search for it, so no big quarrel there. You can search for files from this as well, so if you have a file set up and you want to find it, uh, you can also do that. Okay. We have our calendar in the center. If you click Open Calendar, this will launch Evolution. You can enter calendar events, which will then be reflected in the pop-out calendar under the date and time. We have our notification icons towards the right. We have accessibility, so if you are visually impaired, you can change some things there. We have our volume settings. We can toggle our wired network on and off in this case. And if you click on your username, you have a menu that pops up here. This menu is kind of short and sweet. It allows you to access your online accounts, your system settings. You can turn off notifications from the messaging bar. You can lock the screen, switch user, log out, or suspend the session. Now one thing you'll notice that is missing here is power off. First couple times I logged in the GNOME Shell 3 I had an issue log, you know, getting out of it and shutting down the computer. I ended up logging out and shutting down that way from the login screen. After doing a quick search online I found that if you hold the Alt key, the suspend option turns into power off. You can hold down the Alt key while left clicking power off, it will shut down your computer. So that's pretty much it. That's GNOME Shell 3. Uh, that's how you navigate it. Keyboard shortcuts are a very large part of GNOME Shell 3. Uh, there's keyboard shortcuts for virtually everything. Too many for me to be able to include in a single video. So if you do decide to use GNOME Shell 3, then I would highly recommend you checking out some of the shortcuts. It'll make your experience with it a little better, a little more efficient, and a little quicker to use. And a little funner as well, in my opinion. But anyways, that's GNOME Shell 3. Do check into our next video. where I'll, It's going to be a short one where I'll just quickly touch on a few of the reasons why I'm not that big of a fan of GNOME Shell 3. So do tune into that video. It should be coming up within the next day or so. As always, be sure you follow us on Twitter at twitter.com forward slash techiesmarts. Look in the video description or if you're watching this on our blog, check the bottom of the blog post for the links to our Facebook and Google Plus pages. And be sure to visit our website at techiesmarts.com. As always, thanks for watching and have a great day.